What we're going to discuss now is uh, really one of the major ideas in Calculus 1, one of the major uh, ways to integrate functions. There are, it turns out, five techniques of integration. One is the method of substitution, integration by parts, trigonometric reduction, trig substitution, and partial fraction. Those are the five elementary techniques of integration. The first of which, integration by substitution, is what we're going to talk about now. That's the only one of those five that you actually talk about in Calculus 1 at our school, in our curriculum. And then if you go on to Calc 2, you'll talk about the others. Integration by substitution is absolutely bedrock fundamental. It's one piece of Calc 1 that you really need to have very well understood, very well under your belt when you go into Calc 2. Because a lot of what you do in Calc 2 builds upon this notion of integration by substitution. And so I'll talk about this here as sort of an introduction. And then in later videos, we're going to go through several examples of, I'll lead you through several examples of integration by substitution. You do this several times, you start to get the rhythm. And most students don't have too much of a problem with it. But it needs to become part of your skill set. Now, up until now, the only, way, the only rules we've had for integration are either the power rule, so we might have something like 3x to the second plus 4x minus 2 dx. We might just have the ordinary power rule, and we can do this. The antiderivative here is straightforward. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So this is 3x to the third, divide by 3. This is 4x, raise it to, uh, to the second, divide by 2. And then, then for a, for a uh, constant term, the antiderivative is you reattach the variable. This is the variable indicator for us. And so you reattach the variable 2x, throw on the constant of integration, and you're finished. If you want to simplify that, that's fine. Uh, any simplifying that you do, the only thing I would really allow you to do for now is just simplify the coefficients if you like. So yeah, 3 over 3 is 1, 4 over 2 is 2. And remember, you can always check your result by finding the antiderivative of your answer, and you should get back to the original you started with. So that's one form. One is the, the basic power rule. The other are the basic, the basic forms, uh, the antiderivative of sine of x. Now, we know that to be negative cosine of x. That's one of the basic forms. Uh, so we know the antiderivative of secant squared of x. Because, now, the reason we know this is correct is the derivative of negative cosine is equal to sine. We want to find the function whose derivative is secant squared. Well, we know that to be tangent. So these are just the basic forms, and this is the power rule. Up until now, those are the only two techniques you have in your toolkit. We're now going to talk about another very useful and very applicable, uh, another tool, the integration by substitution. Now this is the basic structure. Suppose we have this expression. We have, now, if I were to ask you this, x squared minus 4x uh, quantity squared, well, you would first thing you do is, is foil this. However, there are some circumstances where that might not be particularly useful. Suppose we had, suppose we have 2x times x squared minus 4, and let's suppose that's raised, oh, let's say to the sixth power. Now, if you wanted to, you could multiply this thing out by itself six times and get a gigantic a polynomial, take that big polynomial, distribute it in 2x, get another huge uh, gigantic polynomial, and then use the power rule. But it turns out that this is going to be much easier and it's much more direct using the integration by substitution. The issue is this, this is neither a basic form nor is it something for the power rule. There is no, there is no, that it doesn't exist. There is no product rule for integrals. There is no quotient rule for integrals. And there is no chain rule for integrals. You have all those rules for derivatives. 
For antiderivatives, there is no product rule, there is no quotient rule, there's no chain rule. And so you use other techniques to find the antiderivative. So what we need to do is we're going to apply something called the integration by substitution. The idea is this. This expression, as it currently stands, is in the language of the x variable. What we're going to do is translate this problem into a different language, a different variable. That solution is going to be easy to find, and then we translate back to the original variable. It's going, this, this is a way to think of it. We have the problem, and we have the solution, or the answer. Now, we have the problem in the x language, or using, let's say, the x variable. And we want the solution in the x variable. The problem is, finding that solution is very difficult. To square this thing out, to multiply this thing out six times, it takes forever. This, going directly from here to here, is either not possible, not tenable, it's not doable, it's very difficult. So we cannot go directly from the problem in the X language into the answer or the solution in the X language with the X variable. What we're going to do is translate this problem into a different language, into a different variable. We're going to translate everything in the X language into the U language using a u variable. You can use any variable you want. Everyone uses the variable u. You might as well join the club. You don't have to use u. You can use anything except x. It's probably all right. Uh, but typically, this is called u substitution. Everyone does u. You might as well join the club. And here's the thing. When we translate the problem correctly, using the correct techniques we're going to discuss, then this is the problem stated in the u variable language. Finding the answer in the u variable language is easy. It turns out that when you find the answer in the u variable, it is either a basic form or it's the power rule. Almost always it's the basic form, one of the basic forms, or it's the power rule. In any event, it's going to be very easy to get the answer in the U variable. But the problem is, we don't want the answer in the language of the U variable, so we need to translate back into the variable language of X. So that's the mnemonic. We're going to start here, chant, translate the problem, find the answer, and then translate back, and that's going to be our method for getting around this difficulty here. The key lies in knowing how to choose what we're going to let u equal. So u substitution always starts with the word let. If you want to get full credit out of me, if you want to get full credit out of me, if you do a u substitution, you start it with the word let. You don't just go off and start things. You because I'm going to talk about the let statement. Let this, let statement, let. So start with let, let u equal. You choose something in this expression and let u equal that value. There are some rules to work with. There is no one hard and fast always do this procedure. There are some sort of Rules of thumb, there are some guidelines. It's more like the, the, the pirate's code. They're more like guidelines. And so what we're going to do is choose what u equals, translate everything into the language of u, and then be able to find the answer in the language of u. And then we're going to use the same let statement to translate back. So that's the procedure. Now, one of the rules of thumb is this. If you have a parenthetical raised to a power, if you have a parenthetical raised to a power, that's a really good indication. There's no guarantee, but that's a really good indication. If you have a parenthetical raised to a power, let you equal, not the whole thing, just the stuff in parenthesis. In this case, 
x squared minus 4. Not, not, don't raise it to the 6th power, just the part inside, x squared minus 4. Another rule of thumb is this. Do you see how this is x to the 2nd power? See how this is x to the 1st power? Usually, you choose u equal the larger exponent. You'll see why here in a little bit. There are some other guidelines we'll talk as we go through some examples. But in this case, so we have x to the second minus 4. That's in parenthesis being raised to a power. And so I'm going to let u equal the stuff in parenthesis that's being raised to a power. The next thing we do is you find the derivative. Everything here now needs to get translated into the language of the u variable. Now notice, what we have so far is this. Uh, I'm going to move this O down a little bit. This stuff in parenthesis, we know how to translate that into the U language. Right? The stuff in parenthesis is, and instead of saying x squared minus 4 to the 6th, we can simply say U to the 6th. And all of this is now accounted for. We've translated all of this into the new language. The next question is, what is left unaccounted for? What do we have left that remains to be translated? Well, what do we have left so far? We have the 2x and we have the dx. Very often that's what happens. You have some, a little stuff left over. Very often it's in the front. Not always. Uh, you have a little factor up here. And you always have dx because any expression, any integral must have dx. So at the very, very least, you need to translate dx into the new language. But we have 2x dx. Here's how that works. You take the derivative du dx, the derivative, and use this notation. Use this Leibniz notation. The derivative of u with respect to x is equal to, now just compute the derivative. And the derivative is, well, looky there, derivative... Uh, someone must have done an expert job of choosing this example. Because what we have left over is precisely this piece. That does not always occur, but it does always occur on the very first example of integration by substitution because it's the very first example. Uh, if it's not the same, we'll talk about that here pretty soon. So what we have left is we have constructed this 2x. Now, the next piece is this. du dx is equal to 2x. This is not a good way to write this because we still need this dx over here. What we end up doing is this. Multiply both sides of this equation by the differential dx. Multiply both sides of the equation by dx. On the left-hand side, this cancels. On the right-hand side, you simply get 2x dx. Now, that's going to happen every time, every time. That's going to happen every time, every time, every time. If it happens every time, then we don't need to write it every time. We can do this. Think of this as the derivative with respect to u is equal to 2x, which is the derivative with respect to x. And everything on this side needs to be in the U language. Everything on this side needs to be in the X language. You may not mix them. You may never, never, ever mix. You may not have an X variable and a U variable. That is never, ever, never allowed. You may not have an X and a U variable over here. Over here only u's, over here only x's. Now, so let u equal x squared minus 4, we translated that piece. Now, what do we have left over? We have the 2x dx. Well, that's what this says. Look, the 2x dx in the x language, how do you say that in the u language? Well, some of you speak more than one language. I speak a little bit of German. I know that sometimes larger expressions in one language are said with a very concise uh, saying in the other language. And so 2x dx in the x language translates to simply du in the u language. 
So all of this, 2x dx, translates as simply du. Now, a big what if. What if what you create here is not the same as this? We'll worry about that on a new example. Next example, we'll worry about that. But in our case, the 2x dx, which is what was left over, translates exactly as simply du. In our little cycle here, we are now at this stage. We have taken the problem in the x language and changed it into a problem in the u language. Now we find the answer in the u language. And notice, this is very, this is not just easy, this is very easy. This, this had all kinds of stuff. You have to multiply this thing out times itself six times. It gets to be this gigantic. No, no, no. This is very easy because this is simply the power rule. Very, very often that's what occurs. You simply generate the power rule. The power rule is, says, the antiderivative of u to the sixth is u to the seventh over seven plus the constant of integration. That's the answer, except that's the answer in the U language. We are now here. We have the problem stated in the X language. We translated it down to the U language. We found the answer in the U language. The last thing we need to do is translate that back up into the language of the original variable of the problem. And to do that, we go to the let statement. That's what, one of the reasons I'm having you write let every time. Go back to the let statement. Let. Let u equal x squared plus 4. So what does u equal? u equals x squared minus 4. So write this as, instead of u to the 7th, this is x squared minus 4 to the 7th over 7 plus c, and you're out. That is the structure of the integration by substitution, the method of substitution. Let u equal a piece, find the differential, make sure that everything is accounted for, you translate into the other language, find the answer in the u language, and then translate back to the original language and you're finished. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll, I'll stop this, we'll do a, another video where we'll do a few examples of this, Again, sort of with, with guidelines to how to know what to choose to uh, make sure that this substitution process goes well. And then what do you do if this doesn't work out nice and neat as it has here? So that's what's going to happen on the next video up.